Welcome to Frognapark. This is one of the Norwegian's top tourist attractions with more than 1 million annual visitors. The park covers 4 hectares and it's the world's largest sculpture park made by a single artist. The sculptures consist of naked human figures in all variety of poses and situations, exploring the human form and human life at its purest. This is the main gate. It consists of five large gates, two small pedestrian gates, and two copper roof gate houses, both adorned with weather vanes. The gate was designed in the year 1930 and erected in 1942, and it was financed by the Norwegian Bank. The park is free to enter and it's open 24 hours a day. Gustav Vigeland was responsible for the design and architectural outline of the park. He made over 200 sculptures which are permanently installed in this park. The park was built between the years 1939 to 1949. But unfortunately, this artist did not live to see the park's completion. He died in the year 1943. The sculpture complex of the Vigeland Park begins with a 100-meter granite bridge on which 58 bronze statues are located. Vigeland worked on the models of the sculptures from 1925 to 1933. Already in the summer of 1940, when the rest of the park still was at a large construction site, the bridge was open to the public. So at this time, the four tall granite columns portraying human fighting lizards were also erected. These show demons in absolute control of their victims and represent a dramatic contrast to the more unconcerned play and joy of life. At the corners of the bridge, Four columns with sculptures show the struggle of a man with dragons. This bridge was built on top of an old bridge constructed in 1914. Vigeland designed the new bridge and its construction was carried out from 1918 to 1930. He modeled all these sculptures in full size without any assistance of pupils or other artists. He modeled them in clay and they are all preserved in the park museum. The carving in stone and the casting in bronze were done by a number of talented craftsmen. He also designed the setting and the layout of the grounds with their far-stretching lawns and long straight avenues bordered with maple trees. So these figures are sublime studies of human body in all its glorious simplicity, male and female, young and old, and examine human relationships. Most of the sculptures are dedicated to the theme of family, the relationship between parents and children. Here stands a rich variety of children, women and men in different ages, some alone and others in groups. Stationary figures that flank the cube formed latins alternate with dynamic groups. By the run of the waterfall, the bridge widens to each side and is marked with figures surrounded by massive bronze wheels.
Here you will also find Sinatagen, the little angry boy. In spite of his size, the little boy is one of the most popular figures of the park. Although the sculptures of the bridge were amongst the latest Vigeland made for the park, but they were the first to be installed. Below the bridge is a circular playground with eight bronze sculptures of small children. He described all stages of an early life from lying down, sitting up, crawling, standing up and walking. And in the center, mounted on a small granite column, is the figure of an unborn child. Vigeland also designed a children's ferry to the amusements of the park's younger visitors and the boat had its monumental granite wharf a few steps further down from the children's playground. For many years after the Second World War, it sailed around where today only swans and ducks swim. The fountain is one of the park's most notable sites a magnificent structure surrounded by 20 statues, each representing a different stage of human life, from childhood to death. A plaster mold of the fountain was exhibited as early as 1906, though the sculpture was initially intended for Norway's parliament. 20 bronze trees entwining the figures of people represent all stages of human life. The beginning of life is birth and infancy, teenage period, youth describes the dreams of flights and fancy, relationship between men and women creating a family, motherhood, the wisdom of adulthood, continuity of generations, transmission of life experience to the grandchildren, all age and death. By depicting his characters among the branches of trees, the sculptures wanted to emphasize the inseparable connection of man with nature. At the highest point in Frogner Park lies the park's most popular attraction, the monolith. It is carved out of one enormous piece of granite, 46 feet tall, and depicts 121 figures climbing in and around each other, all fighting their way to the top. The monolith was first shown to the public at Christmas of 1944, and 180,000 people crowded into the wooden shed to get a close look at the creation. The shed was demolished shortly afterwards. 
the people are drawn towards heaven, not only characterized by sadness and controlled despair, but also delight and hope, next to a feeling of togetherness, carefully holding one another tight in this strange sense of salvation. The first smaller sketches to a giant column dates 1919. Vigiland molded it in full size in clay in his new studio at Frogner in 1924 and 1925, and it only took him 10 months. Thereafter, it was cast in plaster, and in the autumn of 1926, a granite block weighing hundreds of tons was transported by sea up the Uschlofjord from a stone quarry near Halden. The block arrived at its destination in the early 1927 and was erected the year after. A shed was built around the stone and the plaster model was installed next to it. In 1929, the transferring of the figures could begin. It took three stone cards 14 years to finish the work. In 1943, the last part of the Collins Plaza model could finally be dismantled and carried back to the Vigilance Museum, where it still can be admired. In the axis further west from the monolith is a sandio completed around 1930 and finally the Wheel of Life modeled in 1933-34. The wheel is a symbol of eternity and is here executed as a garland of women, children and men holding on to each other. In a sense, this sculpture sums up the dramatic theme of the entire sculpture part. Man's journey from cradle to grave through happiness and grief, through fantasy, hope and wishes of eternity. I guess you might have so much thoughts and ideas after watching this. Tell me in the comments below. Please subscribe and remember the notification bell for more interesting videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching.